This is an unbelievable true story. After World War II in 1948, veterans were coming home from the war and building new homes. Some of these veterans were building homes around a lake in Idaho. Oh, but there was just one problem. There were already homes there. Beaver homes. Idaho Fishing Game had a gnawing problem on their hands. Too many beavers. One of the department conservation officers named Elmo was given the job of solving this problem. His first task was to find a location to relocate the beavers from which they would not return. He knew just the place, a remote wilderness area now known as the Frank Church River of no return. <laughs> it wasn't going to be easy. This area had a few challenges like no roads. Almost first thought was to use pack animals like mules to relocate the beavers. Apparently this isn't a good idea for the beaver or the mule. Beavers release a smell and cause quite a commotion when strapped to the back of a mule, closed in a box, which in turn spooks the mule. Okay, Alma needs to think of another idea. Huh. He knew there was a surplus of parachutes left over from the war. So he thought, hey, the beavers could just parachute into the back country. Well, not actually strapping a parachute to the back of a beaver, but putting a beaver in a box made out of willow attached to a parachute. Once the box landed, it could gnaw its way out. <laughs> they gave the willow box idea a go and quickly knew it wasn't going to work because once they put beavers in the willow box, they immediately began chewing their way out. And it was feared all these beavers would be walking around the inside of the airplane before it ever reached a drop zone. So I'm gonna design yet another type of box. This one would open like a suitcase when it hit the ground, releasing the beaver. All Elmo has to do now is test a new box design with a real beaver inside of it. He found an older male beaver who became his test pilot and proceeded to drop the box with parachute attached on a landing field. Over and over and over again. Every time this beaver landed, there was someone waiting on the ground to put him back in the box for the next test run. After a while, the beaver would step outside the box and go back in on his own. He knew the drill. After Elmo completed all the test runs, it was time for the real drop zone in the wilderness. So the day arrives. That original test pilot beaver, well, for all of his hard work, he got his own box in first class and was on the first flight out along with three females. The drop crates are loaded into the airplane. Parachutes are attached to cargo lines and the boxes are stacked in rows along the waist of the plane. 10 boxes to a load, 20 beaver ready for the flight to Mountain Meadows. The plane makes a careful approach, ready for the drop. Now into the air and down they swing, down to the ground near a stream or a lake. When the three female beavers landed, their box opened and they immediately started exploring their new home. But the older test pilot male remained in this box thinking, he would be doing this again and again, not knowing his parachuting days were over. But don't fear, eventually he walked out and his colony was later reported as very well established. In all, there were 76 parachuting beavers. Are you interested in seeing beavers, but stumped where to go? Stop by for Nall Preserve located in Southwest Ohio. Even though beavers are mostly active at night, there are plenty of signs that beavers leave behind that you can see during the day. Just hike one of our trails and you just might see. Well, I hope this has inspired you to be curious, explore, and go outdoors. Thanks for watching. All right, beavers, you're gonna have visitors coming down this trail, so you need to get all cleaned up. Right. Thank you. Thank you.